dairy and beef cows on farms across the UK. It's vital that we keep these herds healthy. But there's a disease experts warn threatens these cattle, and therefore the livelihoods of our farmers. And that disease is bovine TB. These cattle share this landscape with a huge variety of British wildlife. But sometimes there's a conflict between farming and nature. Here in the rolling Peak District hills, farmers and conservationists are working hand in hand to protect one of our most iconic species, the badger. Some believe that badgers can transmit the disease, passing it between the cattle they live alongside. There are now a number of schemes across the UK vaccinating the badgers so they don't contract TB in the first place. Former nurse Debbie Bailey is part of the most successful vaccination programme in the country, here in the Peak District. Hi Debbie. Hi Ben. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. So you've gone from vaccinating people and <laughs> children to now vaccinating wild yeah, animals. Taking bloods off people, and running clinics. Yeah, I worked on a ward for 13 years of my career. Yeah, and then came out to do this. I mean, it couldn't be more different, really. Uh, in some ways it is, in some ways it's not. Well, what, are the similar, what are the similarities? <laughs> the patients are awkward. <laughs> whether they're a badger or whether they're a human, yeah. Yeah, but no, I love it. It's fantastic. This is my, what I call my office now. Right, come on, let's get what we need. So how does this particular vaccination programme work then? Um, well, in this area, we've got what we call an edge area. The idea is, is that we get in now and vaccinate the badgers and we can keep that TB down as a, a level. Does that mean you have to vaccinate every single badger that lives here? No, as long as we get around 70% of the social group, we're okay. But before we can even think about vaccinating, we need to catch a badger, and that means laying some traps. So how does it work now? Big oh, hole look, there. There's the hole there right go. outside. So what's the first plan? So the first thing is, is to get the peanuts uh, at the back of the trap so that we can put the uh, stone on top. And why are you using the tube? Uh, uh, it's easier, just peanuts don't scatter everywhere. Ah. We don't want any peanuts around the trap because the badger will dig around the outside rather than go in. You've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. A lot of times, yeah. Well, you learn as you go along. Badgers are very clever, very intelligent. Okay. So this is the stone. Yeah, so you've got to go in that way and yeah. I'll get hold of the wire okay. from the other end. And if you just hover the shovel just over the peanuts. Just over the peanuts. Yeah. yeah. Try not to scatter them. That's it. Brilliant. Okay, and then if you pull the shovel away. Okay. That? That's fantastic. You've done this before. Okay. So the idea is the badger comes in and it tries to move the stone, does it, to get to the... The badger will come in, he'll kick the stone back. And They're strong, are they? Very. So they'll kick the stone back and that sets the trap and it closes. Yeah, so that's set now. So I like to give it a test, so for them from that side of the door will drop. As the night draws in, Debbie's carefully placed night vision cameras capture the badgers at work and play. This gives her team an idea of how many badgers live within this set, and therefore how many they need to inoculate. Some sets are more than 100 years old, used by generations of badgers, and groups of up to 14 adults can live together in one network of tunnels. But will any of these animals take our peanut bait ready for us to vaccinate in the morning? Countrywise is sponsored by Welcome to Yorkshire. I'm in the beautiful Peak District with a project working to vaccinate badgers against bovine TB. Last night, Wildlife Trust Officer Debbie Bailey and I set several traps. By law, all trapped badgers have to be released three hours after sunrise. And at the height of summer, that means an early start. two cubs in here yeah. so we'll put the wicket in the middle yeah and then we'll Just split them it. yeah that's it lovely okay. debbie injects each badger with a tb vaccine well done that's it 
and then snips away a tuft of hair and marks each animal. This means if the badger's caught again, Debbie knows it's already been vaccinated. Lovely. There we go. If you lift that bit, keep, keep, your fing keep your fingers out of the way. That's it. There's one. Straight down the hole. Backing out. <laughs> never seen that. I know. It's so fantastic, isn't it, to see them up close. How, how young do you think those two were? They'll be this year's cubs, so they'll have been born uh, end of February, beginning of March. What you're doing is is truly unique, really. This could change uh, the whole dynamic, this whole badger debate. Yeah, hopefully. You know, we've, we've been very successful with our trapping in Derbyshire. We're getting over 70%. And so if we can keep those success rates up, then we'll have a healthy population of badgers in four years when we've finished. Hopefully resettle that balance between farming yeah. and wildlife. Yeah, yeah, and that's really important. You know, have that relationship with the farmers. God, you're free. The cage is open. <laughs> Amazing to see badgers from that perspective so close up. I've never seen yeah, that before. Yeah, no. I think most people, that, when I ask people if they've ever seen a badger, they always say, yeah, dead at the roadside. So, you know, seeing this is, is uh, fantastic. Badgers are your life. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> The issue of TB in badgers has become one of the most divisive in the British countryside. But thanks to Debbie, her volunteers and countless Peak District farmers, they're getting closer to a workable solution and a world in which both badgers and cattle can live harmoniously in this magnificent countryside. This is Snowdonia. 